Hey everybody, this is Issa Bettencourt, your host of The Bug Scope. Welcome to a special episode this Tuesday where we are welcoming a special guest. Um, and also I'll give a heads up reminder to a little beginning of the broadcast announcement that on Thursday we'll be doing the showing of the cicada video that I've been working on. So make sure you come by. That's going to be at 5 o'clock p.m. So we're pushing the bug scope from the normal time at 3 over to 5 for that. So um, I can't wait. So without further ado, I want to welcome our special guest today, who is Trinity, Trinity Walls. And I'll bring her on the screen to say hello. Hi, Trinity. Hello. Welcome. Yeah, Thank so you. Trinity is an arachnologist who is in her third year at the University of California, Berkeley, studying how mate choice patterns shift over time and how these shifts affect hybridization. Um, also, I, what I think is so cool, Trinity, is how you've studied spiders at every degree level. In undergrad, <laughs> you shared that you studied, what did you study in undergrad? Was it? I was studying orb weavers in Puerto Rico, yeah. Okay, cool. And then wolf spiders for your master's degree? Mm -hmm. And now jumping spiders. Yeah. Yeah, so many different spider groups, and that's really awesome. So yeah, welcome to the Bug Scope today. Great Thank to you so have much. you here. What? Let's start with the question of how this all got started for you before we go uh, jump into... Later on, we'll be jumping into this seven myths that you will help us bust today. Um, but in the meantime, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in the spider world? Absolutely, yes. So um, I've actually been interested in spiders since I was about, uh, my mom says she noticed when I was about two. So I've always been super interested in them. Um, I Everyone used to always tell me when I was younger, like, oh, don't touch those, those are dangerous. You know, they're gonna hurt you. And every time I looked at them, they were always running away from me. And I used to always think, what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean they're, they're trying to hurt me? It's, it's literally running the other direction. And the only reason it could possibly bite me right now is because people are telling me to kill it, get rid of it. So I have to put myself close to it for it to be able to do anything to me. So I don't understand. And so I kept looking into it more and more and more. And my mother used to always tell everyone that I would grow out of it. And I like to say that I grew into it. Um, so... Um, as I got older, um, I, would, you know, I was going to school and I was in like middle school and high school and teachers were always telling me different things about spiders. And I used to think, used to think that doesn't make any sense. And so I would start studying it and I realized that's not true. Um, and so I got into college and beyond and started studying them. And I realized a lot of the information that's, about, uh, that's um, out in the world about them is just not, not the case. And so I, I wanted to expose the truth about them and study what they're doing and figure out like, you know, why do they behave the way that they do? Why are people afraid of them? What's going on? And the more I learned, the more I realized they're super cool. And so I'm still doing it. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, uh, I love that so much. And right now you are in the field, right? I am. Yes. Normally be in a room filled with spiders and um, other, I guess, posters? What, what do you have at home? At home? <laughs> um, at home, I have, hmm, that's a great question. At home, I usually have posters of spiders all around my room. I have pillows with spiders on them and spider keys. I have shirts, jewelry, stuffed animals, spiders, um, all those types of things. I also have my pets, which include um, a corn snake, a blue tongue skink, and my four tarantulas and a scorpion. Um, but the tarantulas are currently at school because I do have a roommate who is not a fan of spiders. And so I agreed when I moved in that I would leave those at school in the spider lab. Makes sense. They have plenty of food there. But normally they would be in the house as well. I think you're muted. I think you're muted. <laughs> um, oh, sorry about that. Um, I was going to say... Uh, Hearing about that makes me be like, all right, we got to schedule another broadcast in the future to get a tour. <laughs> Sounds like an awesome I'm down. Thing. I'm totally down. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So you're in Florida right now? I am. Gainesville, Florida. Mm -hmm. Cool. And what are you uh, working on in the field in, over in Florida? 
So what I'm currently doing, so my research involves looking at uh, mating and mate choice, so mating behavior in a particular genus of spiders of Phytopus, particularly in um, Phytopus regis and Phytopus odiosus. Oh yeah, that photo, <laughs> that's me on a horse farm. Um, a lot of uh, regal jumping spiders make their webs in kind of like the crevices between like a fence post and like the side. Um, and so I find a lot of them there. Um, they also make their, uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't say webs, silk nest. Um, they also make their nest in like uh, palm fronds and like cabbage palms and things like that. So like I walk around and look for them. Um, and then they, the uh, Phytopus odiosus, their canopy jumping spiders, make theirs in their nest in trees. Um, and so I've been kind of walking around looking for these guys. And what I basically do is I, I collect some of the, oh yeah, that's a regal jumping spider female. Um, I collect some of the immature um immature individuals and I raise them in the lab. They get nice, good life, lots of food and all that type of thing. And then um, when they're older, I actually meet them with each other and, or at least give them a trial, see if they're willing to mate. Um, and I actually found that they not only, at least for the regal jumping spiders, they actually w are willing to mate multiple times. Um, and so, um, but it seems like the first time they seem to mate every time, the second time they seem to be more discriminatory. So they're not always willing to mate. And so I'm trying to figure out like, what is actually going on? Are they uh, judging based on the previous mate that they had? Like, is this one bigger or smaller or different things? Is it based on, they have a lot of signals. So they do a lot of uh, raising their arms and like doing like this and doing like that. And um, so I'm trying to see it. Are they paying attention to how much of this they're doing, the, the courtship figure that's going on? Also, I found um, some spiders in the field that looked a little different. And so I asked another person, like, do you know what these are? And it was um, the kind of premier person who studies this genus and has for decades. And he said, oh, those are some hybrids. That's that's a cross between these two different species. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> um, so I want to collect some of both species and see how often do they hybridize? Does it depend on if they've mated previously or not, or who they've encountered before? These all, these guys also have different signals. Um, and so the ones that I started with, the regal jumping spiders, actually just have visual signals. They just raise their arms and kind of throw their arms around a bunch and move toward the female, the, guy, the, um, the males do. And the other species, the canopy jumping spiders, actually have visual and vibratory signals. So they throw their arms, but they also are producing vibrations that the females are paying attention to. And so their signals are so different, but they seem to be willing to mate with each other. So what actually matters to them? Are they actually recognizing each other? Like what, what's actually even going on? So that's what I'm studying, yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, so who, what species is in the photo here uh, where the display is currently happening? Or will you just explain this photo to our viewers? On sure. The um, so this photo, the bottom one, or no, the top one, I'm not sure. Oh, I'll make <laughs> it right. I'm making, oh no. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. So, um, the, what you're seeing here is actually two regal jumping spiders, a male and a female, male on the left, a female on the right, and the male has noticed the female and is raising his arms and trying to court her. Um, and she's sitting on the other side, kind of paying attention, seeing what he's doing. And what he would normally do is he will slowly go forward and he'll raise his arms and suddenly back up and she'll kind of do like this, look, look around and then he'll go forward again and then raise his arms and back up a little bit and she'll continue to stare at him. And every time he does it, she gets a little more interested. She keeps looking at him, but basically he kind of does like this and she goes like, like that and continuously on um, back and forth for a while. And then eventually um, if she's willing, they'll mate um, and then she'll produce however many egg sacs often in the, often in the lab, six or so, five to six each with like 150 um, babies. So there's lots of lots of little spiderlings in the lab. Yeah, so that's, that's currently what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That's so fun. And um, oh, this is a little bit of an aside, but do you, do you raise the young? When... <laughs> so generally, uh, yes. So what I ended up doing, I, I don't know, I didn't really um, factor this in, but it's often really hard to raise spiderlings in the lab. Um, but I can't release them because I work in California and they are not in California. Um, so releasing, these are very large jumping spiders. They would be top predators in California and would be introducing something that is not there and shouldn't, shouldn't be there. Um, so I can't release them, but 
prior to the pandemic, I actually had a bunch of undergrads in the lab who were super interested, who were, um, you know, pre-veterinary students and things like that. And they were really interested and were caring for all the babies. They were designing all these different experiments. Um, and they had all this stuff planned to do with them. And so I had lots of people taking care of all the babies who were really into it. But the pandemic happened and they all had to go home. So I've been raising them myself. But hopefully we'll get more undergrads in the lab soon to take that back up and start doing that again. That's fun. Yeah. Cool. Um, Frank is asking, how far can they see and recognize something? We'll take a couple more questions um, on this topic and then we'll dive into the myths. <laughs> um, so I guess it depends on what you mean by recognize recognize something. Um, they have eye, eyes, about eight eyes that are used for different things. Um, and so if you're coming up from the back of them, that some of their their eyes kind of in the back and on the sides of their head are used to like detect motion and like shadows and things like that. So often people are afraid of jumping spiders because they suddenly turn around and look at you, but they're turning around and looking at you because they're using those big principal eyes in the front, which are actually used for resolution. Um, so they're turning around and saying, what is that? And then they say, oh, okay, well, they don't say anything, but they, yeah, there you go. You can actually see those big eyes in the front. They turn around and look at you with those and they can actually see you now. And they have pretty good eyesight. Um, so they can see from several, several centimeters away, they can definitely see you coming. Um, I've walked up with some spiders. I've been pretty, I would say pretty far for a spider. I would say a couple feet, even a meter, and they'll, they'll look up and notice that I'm there. I'm not sure how much they can actually resolve what I am, um, but they can definitely see me as I get closer. They change their behaviors based on what they think is going on. So if they think I'm a predator, you know, they'll run away. If they're just kind of curious as to what I'm doing, they'll just look up at you. And sometimes if you put your hand in front of them, they'll just jump on it and stare at you so they can get a better look. Yeah, it's definitely really cute to watch um, when I've had jumping spiders around, just watch them turn their head and look up and make eye contact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, there's two questions here. Um, do they see colors? And then the other question too is, can you give an idea of size and- um, Sure. You might so, be right. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no. Go, did you want to say something? I was going to say, I think you have one with you right now. I that do. Might help mm -hmm. with giving a sense of size. Yes. So um, they can see colors, actually. Um, the jumping spiders have the best vision of any spiders that we know of. Um, they can see colors. They Their vision is um, pretty good. They're kind of like cats. Um, but yeah, they can see like greens and potentially some reds. They can see um, UV light. They've, they've got they've got pretty good vision. Um, and in terms of size, my jumping spiders are some of the largest ones in the U.S. Not necessarily the largest, but definitely the largest in uh, Southeast U.S. Um, they're a little over an inch long when they're adults. And so I actually brought a couple uh, that I caught in the field in the last couple of days. So this is a female um, jumping spider, female Phytopus regis. I don't know if you can quite see her, um, but this is the female. Usually you can see her eyes. I can try to make her move a little bit, see if you can see her eyes, but I have oh. this one. And you collected her in the fields recently? I did, mm-hmm. So I'll see if I can, I'm gonna do this. This might be dangerous, but we'll see. Can you see her eyes at all? Aww. Yeah, bit. so cute. Yeah. Um, Looking out at the camera. And then I have this girl who definitely does not want, <laughs> who's trying to kind of hide. Um, but this is the canopy jumping spider, um, Bitipus odiosus. And she is about the same size as the one that I just showed you. Um, but you, generally they're a little bit smaller. Um, this is actually a really large one. I was kind of surprised when I saw her. But yeah, um, generally jumping spiders are like a centimeter or less. I would say less than a centimeter. So these guys are huge and they will catch anything that comes by. So like they'll eat other jumping spiders. They'll eat dragonflies. Occasionally they'll catch you know, frogs or lizards if they can. They don't really care. They're very opportunistic. Um, they're not really afraid of much. So they'll, they'll do what they can. Uh, I have a question. You said the one is arboreal. Or mm -hmm. Arboreal was in the name. So is it in the canopy oftentimes? Yeah. Or in... mm -hmm. yeah. So the... how... Where did you find it in the field? Um, so I was actually looking at some trees um, and I actually found 
uh, I saw this black thing with like this kind of, when you, when you start going out into the field and you get like a very specialized, you know, search engine in your head, you notice things that are like really not different, but like just different enough that part of your brain is like, it's like an abnormal leaf. Um, and I looked up and it was getting dark and I saw this like little black thing with this other thing next to it. I was wondering what in the world is that? And I decided to look at it and it was, it was in a tree um, above my head. And I realized it was this girl holding a grasshopper that was about this long. <laughs> and <laughs> I was wow. wondering, yeah. Um, and so I, I caught her and the grasshopper so she could finish her meal. Um, but the grasshopper was probably about twice her size. So again, they'll, they don't really care. Um, and yeah, she was just up in the branches above me. Um, and then later, I actually should have shown, I should have brought this photo, but I actually was looking in the tree and I was um, looking at some leaves that looked like they were slightly closer together than the other leaves. And so I pulled it back slightly and there's all this webbing inside. And I was like, oh, this is your house. So <laughs> this is really Aww. cool. The house was about, I don't know, about that big maybe. And so she'd probably been up wow. in there and she'd come out to get some food. That's really cool. <laughs> Um, very cool encounters. We have another question, which uh, is from David Howden saying, I wonder how they perceive images on the screen. Do they seem real to them? Yes. So jumping spiders, um, and you actually, if you go to YouTube, you can find people doing this. Um, jumping spiders can not only see, um, can not only see like the screen they can also see like in mirrors and things like that so you can actually play them videos and they'll actually look at the videos and kind of react to the videos if you see a, a mirror if you put a mirror in front of a jumping spider they don't necessarily know it's themselves but they do know that it's a spider and so they'll get up all close to the screen and display and raise their arms and kind of get into like an, uh, a fighting stance um, and so they're doing they're definitely reacting to to screens and actually seeing what's going on I heard, I heard once, so this maybe can segment into myths because maybe it's a myth, maybe not, but I've heard that while cats don't recognize their reflection in a mirror, jumping spiders do. Actually, I, I know that, yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's the screen, I guess. Maybe it was the screen thing, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, from what I've seen, I don't think jumping spiders necessarily know that it's them that they're looking at. Okay. Um, everything that I've seen uh, jumping spiders are usually, uh, you would think that they would not be displaying to themselves if they knew it was themselves. And they're usually very, very, I would, I would say, um, not the jumping spiders are aggressive, but they're, they're being aggressive toward the other spider that's all up in their space, um, i.e. themselves. And so <laughs> I would say that they, they're not quite aware that that's them. Um, and so I, I would say, I don't, I don't think that's true. But I okay. would not be surprised if you could train them to realize it. They're very trainable, and they seem to have a lot of um, intelligence going on. So I would I would say that maybe it's possible, but not from what I've seen so far. Cool. Yeah. Um, we have a comment from Reddit commenting about gorillas reacting to their reflection. And if you think about it, mirrors are you – you don't see a reflection much in nature unless a surface is really shiny or unless you're looking down at water. So it makes sense that animals might be confused by those situations. All right, with that, um, and with this question by Elderberry Icy on Reddit asking, do jumping spiders bite humans? That's a good segue into the busting <clears throat> the seven spider myths. And maybe we can approach this as maybe people can guess what the myths might be. Sort of like a- That's interesting. Myth perhaps, um, maybe for the first few, or we can get started. But um, maybe we can start with that um, myth that addresses that. Um, would, uh, and that one would be... Sorry, I was reading the comments. I got distracted for a second. Yeah, um, the myths about spider bites and doctors IDing them. So maybe answer that question and we can dive into that. Yeah. Uh, no. um, so I would say that, I mean, can jumping spiders bite humans? Yes, they can. Um, but if most things can bite. I mean, bite babies can bite. So like, um, which is always something I tell people, it's like, babies can bite. I mean, you know, most things can bite. Um, but they're, they're not, 
uh, most people wouldn't consider a baby bite harmful. Um, and so in terms of uh, spider bites and doctors, so the fact of the matter is that there's a lot of, um, you will hear often that so-and-so got bitten by this horrible spider and they, they went to the doctor and said, oh, I got bitten by this spider. And the doctor said, oh no. And then, you know, did their thing. And most most spiders, uh, and most, sorry, not most spiders, most uh, doctors, you know, they're trained in their particular field. That field is not arachnology. It's not IDing spiders. And so they have their specialty, but IDing spiders is not part of it. And so they don't actually know what spider bit you. Most people don't even bring the spider in. They just say, I got bitten by a spider. They don't even see the spider. They run to the doctor and do their thing. Um, and if even if they do find the spider in the vicinity, doesn't mean that it's the one that bit you. And if they do collect the spider, they saw it by you, um, and they bring it to the doctor, and you say, I think it's a brown recluse. The doctor doesn't necessarily know that it's a brown recluse. They might say, okay, makes sense, and go with it, but they don't necessarily know that it's a brown recluse. Um, and so you need you need an arachnologist or someone who knows how to ID them to actually say that's a brown recluse. Um, or a black widow or whatever. I mean, black widows are obviously easier to identify, um, but just because you were bitten by something or you had a reaction to something doesn't mean it was a spider bite. And so there is often all these these myths that, oh, so many people have been bitten by this particular spider. It's everywhere. Um, that's usually not the case. They're just not, they're not out to get you. They're not really biting people. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I've heard a ton of people in, uh, in California tell me, oh, brown recluses, you know, it bit me, the doctor said so. And I have to tell them, Brown recluses aren't in California, so they're not, they're not the things biting you. I believe you something bit you. Maybe it was a spider. I don't know. You didn't see it, but probably wasn't a brown recluse. Um, so a lot of it just has to do with that. Like you, you just need someone who, who can look at it and say, oh, it's this particular type of spider, and then you can go from there. But just, just saying you got bitten by a spider or you know this, this bite on your leg or not even a bite. Maybe it's just a reaction to something doesn't mean it was um, a bite from that particular spider. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever been bitten by a spider, Trinity? Um, I have not that I know of. I did at one point in the lab, I was um, trying to feed one of my spiders and I didn't realize that he was getting out. Um, and I started to close the container and didn't see him on the side. And I felt something and I'm not even sure if he like just touched me with his fangs or what. It didn't do anything. It was just kind of like a, huh, something felt pointy. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still not even sure if that, like, I don't even really think he bit me. Um, so I would, I would say no. And I just opened the container and he ran off. It didn't do anything. I just, I, I, I don't want to say he bit me because I really don't feel like he did. Um, yeah. So I, I would say no. And even if he did, it had zero reaction to it at all. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was bit once by a spider and I know it because I saw it bite me because it was all my fault and I tried to pick it up after I was I was like I was like way too um like optimistic and like feeling amazing about my love like my love for spiders was very strong at that time because I was doing a presentation on spiders at a live show in New York City. And so I was like, spiders are awesome. And I love <laughs> you guys so much. And I was sweeping up the floor and realized I had swept up this one spider. And so I was like, oh, let me scoop you up and get you out of the way. Like not thinking about how agitated the spider was that yeah. I just looked at the broom. So of course I got bit by it. Um, and yeah, so I that's the one time I, I've ever gotten bit by a spider. Um, and I. I will add to for everyone that like spiders don't have a reason to go out of their way to bite you like horse flies and mosquitoes and ticks like they need our blood to finish their life cycles um, but uh, spiders don't want to bite us they don't need to bite us they want to stay away from us it's just when conflict happens that um, it may happen but it's extremely unlikely Absolutely. And that's that's exactly the reason why I said if that if the one in the lab, if it did bite me, it's because I was closing the container halfway on its body and it was about to die. Um, and it was trying to let me know that there's a problem. That is it. Um, 
Yeah. And so, yeah, absolutely. They're really not, they have, they have literally no reason to bite you. They, they just want to be on their way. You're not food. You're, you're really not interesting at all. Um, they, they're just trying to do their thing. And if, I mean, if they, yeah, it's like anything else. If you try, if you try to take something's life, it'll fight back. That's true. But other than that, it's got another purpose. You're just not part of it. Totally. All right. So I'm going to bring up the list of the seven myths that we're going to go through. And I will admit to everybody that, let me just switch this as I introduce it and stuff. I'll admit to every, whoa, the screen, um, that I was very hesitant to write these out as notifers because I don't want to perpetuate the myths, but uh, we're going to present them on the screen anyway so you guys can see what, what we're going to bust today as we um, chat here on the bug scope. That's why I was inspired to put an X on the um, on the screen. You'll see as it. Oh wait, I have to select it and then I pushed the wrong thing to the program. Okay. Um, so yeah, seven myths about spiders, and I'll let you read the myths um, as they pop up on the screen, Trinity. Okay. Okay. So they should go up there after this notifer that I accidentally popped up. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, great. So uh, the first myth is that people eat six to eight spiders each year in their sleep. And should I talk about each one or just go ahead and read all seven? Um, I guess let's, let's, let's go, to the go, go down the list. Sorry, okay. on the list. Sure. Uh, so people eat six to eight spiders each year in their sleep. Daddy long legs are spiders, um, depending on what you're referring to, and would be deadly if their fangs were bigger. Uh, lots of myths about spider bites and doctors IDing them. We just kind of talked about that a little bit. All the spiders in your house belong outside. Spiders are dangerous. Spiders are aggressive, out to get you. And spiders are ugly. All of these are myths that I have heard time and time and time again. And I'm constantly talking to people about like, you know, why they think that, where that may have come from. Um, I do a lot of teaching. I'm a PhD student, so I teach different classes to undergrads, and they often ask me when they hear, oh, you like spiders? Why do you do that? They're always asking me. Um, they're always asking me, oh, well, I heard this. I, I, I was told that. Or, well, well, don't they do this? And we get to talk about it and say, no, actually, that's not true. Let's talk about it. So that's why I wanted to bring them up today. Awesome. So let's get started on the list. The first one being, Trinity, do people eat six to eight spiders each year in their sleep? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is that. Yeah, um, I actually was taught that when I was, I think, 13 or so. I was told by a teacher that we eat six to eight spiders in our sleep. And I was like, wow, that's a lot. I'm shocked. And then I started looking into it and I was like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, it's a but, very widespread myth. It is. Yeah. It is remarkably widespread in every like, state that I've lived in. I feel like it's been on like popsicle sticks or snaffle caps or something like that too. Yeah. Maybe, as a it's true a fact. fact. Yeah. <laughs> you tell at parties. Did you yeah. know? Um, but no, that's not true. Um, spiders are very sensitive. They they sense with their, um, they have a lot of sensors on their legs and their different appendages. And so um, they're sensing vibrations as they're walking around using all, like, all the different hairs on their legs and different slits. And so uh, it's like if you saw a cave that was breathing and had a giant mouth that was opening and closing and things like that, and you were like, oh, this is a great place to go. It's like, you don't do that. Spiders, if you're, if you're sleeping with your mouth open, you're like a giant predator to them. There's no reason for them to go inside your mouth and think that this would be a great time and this is where I should nest. That's just, that's not a thing. Um, I'm not going to say that a spider has never fallen into somebody's mouth at some point in, in life ever, maybe, but they don't, they don't willingly go into your mouth really for any reason, especially not when you're sleeping. So. Cool. All right. Myth one busted. <laughs> All right. Number two. Two. Okay. Daddy long legs um, are. No, so the myth is that daddy long legs are uh, the most deadly spider um, but they can't bite you because they have their fangs are too small. And so this myth actually has several different parts to it. Um, daddy mm -hmm. long legs are, it depends on what you're referring to. When I was on the East Coast, 
I'm currently, I guess I'm currently on the East Coast, but when I used to live on the East Coast, when we talked about daddy long legs, we were referring to harvestmen or apillionids. So they're um, this other type of arachnid. They're, I like to call them uh, floating circles with legs. Um, so they're like a circle with eight legs coming out and they are usually referred to as daddy long legs or harvestmen, but they are not actually spiders at all. Um, and they don't have venom or fangs or silk. Um, so none of that is true. And usually when people are referring to daddy long legs being the most deadly spider, they're referring to this arachnid that is not a spider, doesn't have venom, couldn't bite you if it tried. Um, so that's, that's not a thing. However, daddy long legs, at least from what I've, um, and I've been talking to people on the West Coast, because I'm currently um, usually residing in California, when people say daddy long legs, they're actually referring to a spider, cellar spiders, which are these uh, long legged, slender bodied spiders um, that people often find in cellars or in their dark and different dark places in their house. Um, and uh, these actually are spiders, but again, they are not medically significant to humans in any way that we know of. Um, I think people have been bitten by them at some point, I assume, uh, but not not really that we know of. They, they're not really trying to bite you. Um, and they have, no one's really had an adverse reaction to it at all. Um, so yeah, that's not, that's not really a thing. And they're not, again, they're not out to get you. They're not going to willingly just try to bite you. I'm, a guess, I'm guessing that someone was trying to remove it and like either grabbed it or did something that allowed it to get on their hand and try to defend itself because you're trying to kill it. So can you really blame them? Um, but yeah, they're not medically significant in any way. And the other thing is depending on where you are, there are some people in the US and in other places that when they say daddy long legs, they're actually referring to crane flies, um, mm. which is like an insect. They're these um, long legged flies that are uh, often called mosquito killers. Um, or mosquito hawks. They don't eat mosquitoes. Um, they also, people think that they are just giant mosquitoes. They're not giant mosquitoes, but they're also referred to as daddy long legs and also not medically significant. So it's kind of all, it's, it's kind of a complicated myth that has just evolved and changed through time, but generally none of it's true, especially the part about any of the things being incredibly venomous and out, you know, out to get you and kill you and the most venomous, deadly, whatever. None of that's true. Myth busted. All right. <laughs> On number three, we hit earlier, um, which was the one about spider bites and doctors IDing them. And as a quick recap of that, can you give a couple sentences recapping the gist of it? Or we can, I'll bring up the notifier for that one. Notifier for that one. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so the notifier for that one basically is just saying the doctors can't really tell. Um, if you've been bitten by a spider or not, especially if you don't bring the spider in, like they just, they don't know, um, which is not their fault. Like they just, there are many different symptoms that can be similar for different things. I actually um, was doing a research paper at one point for a class and it was supposed to be some type of like historical, I don't even remember what the, what the prompt was, but I asked them, it had to, it had to do with medicine and I asked if I could do it about spiders um, and the professor said, sure, and gave me this really confused look. But basically what I looked up was that they, I looked up, I think, 44 different diseases, infections, viruses, whatever, that were all attributed to brown recluse bites. And it included like poison ivy and skin cancer and like all these different things. And none of them had anything to do with brown recluse bites, but they'd all been diagnosed. All of those different things have been diagnosed as a brown recluse bite at some point. So um, again, uh, doctors are very, very good at their jobs, but they, they, that's just not part of their job. IDing spiders is not part of their job. So you need to ask someone who would know what that spider is. And you definitely need to bring the spider in um, if you think it's what bit you, or you know that it bit you, you need to bring it in so someone can actually look at it and say, this is what it is. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. On to number four of seven myths that we are busting today. Number four is all spiders in your house belong outside. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, a lot of people, and this is actually a thing I used to believe as well. It's just that every spider in your house got there accidentally or, you know, it's just wandered in, um, it's only there because you have 
um, some type of infestation of insects or something, whatever. And it's true that there are definitely spiders that wander into your house. You, you sometimes see different wolf spiders and things that get in your house. And they're usually not meant to be there. They got in there somehow. I actually was looking um, very recently. I opened the door and closed it uh, at night. And I turned back around and there was a spider about the size of my hand that was just sitting on the floor in front of the door. And I was like, hmm, you're not supposed to be in here at all. And it was a large adult male wolf spider that was just sitting in the middle of the floor. And so I caught him and he went back outside because he had no reason to be in there. Um, but there are there are some spiders that are in your house. You often will see the same ones, like just the same spider that seems to always be in your house. That's probably because it's it, that's its habitat. It usually lives in a corner somewhere. Uh, it doesn't, not trying to disturb you for any reason. Uh, you do have some insects in your house pretty much at all times. They're, they're somewhere. And the spiders are just eating them and not disturbing you. They're just your, you know, resident pest control. Um, and so you do have a few that are meant to be in the house and they may not actually survive if you put them outside because that's just not their climate. That's not their, that's not their normal habitat. Um, but the ones that are in your house, again, they're not trying to bite you. They're just there to clean up, just leave them. They'll live out their lives and, you know, die and do their thing. And you, most of them you'll probably never see at all. They chose to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So next myth to bust is that spiders are dangerous. Yeah. So um, I'm sure pretty much all of us at some point have either thought spiders are dangerous or been told spiders were dangerous. And um, generally that is not true. Most of the spiders that you see walking around outside on trees, in the grass, they're not dangerous to you. They have venom. Yes, pretty much all spiders have venom, pretty much. Um, but the venom is used to subdue prey and insects and whatever they're trying to catch, which is not you. Um, so they're not they're not dangerous to you. They, they do not have medically significant venom to you. Um, I mean, again, if something if anything bites you, is it going to feel great? No, but it's not going to it's not going to send you to the hospital unless you're allergic, in which case, if you're allergic to anything, you might have to go to the hospital. It's not like the spider itself. It's just the fact that you're allergic. So in general, spiders are not dangerous. They're not out to get you. Um, and um, being bitten by one, if you were to get bitten by one, is not going to be the end of the world. And the likelihood is if you got some crazy rash or some horrible something on your leg and you don't know where it came from, probably wasn't a spider. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, one thing to think about, too, is that there's like over 40,000 species of spiders, something like Getting that. Getting close to 50,000. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. OK. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so only a tiny fraction are the ones that are have any medical significance. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, on to the next one, which is spiders are aggressive and out to get you. <laughs> yeah, so this one kind of relates to the previous one, um, but this is slightly different in the sense that um, many, many of us, I'm sure, when we were children, were told by our parents, oh, you know, that spider in your house is aggressive, or that spider in your house is going to hurt you, or oh, don't touch it because of this. And some of that has to do with things that they were told by their parents or the general fears that many people have about spiders um, or, you know, a variety of things. Um, but in general, spiders are, are not aggressive. They're going to run away. Um, they know that you're bigger than them. They know that they can't hurt you, really hurt you. And they will only try if, you, if they have literally no other choice. Um, might as well fight back rather than just die without swinging. And so, um, most spiders are not aggressive. Will I say that uh, some spiders are aggressive? There are a few. There are a few um, that are aggressive. But again, usually it is because of something we're doing to them. So like some trapdoor spiders, there are some that if you open their, their trap door, they will come out swinging because you're not supposed to open the door to their house. It's kind of like if you're in your house and somebody opens the door, they're not supposed to do that. So you, most of us would defend our house if there's an intruder as well. So you can't really blame them. Um, yeah, so mo most spiders are, are not aggressive and they're, they're really just trying to live their lives. Cool. All right. 
that brings us to number seven, which is spiders are ugly. Yeah, so this is my favorite one, I would say. And it's my favorite just because I like, I really like talking to people about where their fears or their thoughts about spiders come from. So a lot of people, I'll ask them, why don't you like spiders? And they'll say, spiders are ugly. And I'll say, why? And they'll say, because, because they have eight legs. And I'll say, why is that bad? And they'll say, it's more than four legs. And I'm like, well, <laughs> wait, 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 where did that even come from? Why have we decided that four legs is the, the standard? Anything past that is disgusting. Or they'll say, they have too many eyes. And I'll say, have you ever seen a spider's eyes? Do you, do you look at spiders running across the room and see their eyes? And they say, well, well no. But I, but I know they're there. And I'm like, you don't even see them. Why are you, why are you, what do you mean? You look at that spider and say, it has eight eyes, it's ugly. You're, you're not looking at the eyes. Or, you know, they're super hairy. They're so hairy. And I say, your dog's hairy. And they say, well, yeah, well, yeah but that's, that's different. And I'm like, how? <laughs> it's still hair. What are you talking about? And so it's, it's a lot of like talking to people, just figuring out what about the spider have they deemed ugly? And why? Why has that become the thing that makes it ugly? Um, and so I would say that spiders are not, they're not ugly. They're, they're, they're different than maybe what we're looking for or what the social perception of beauty is. But in general, like spiders, spiders aren't ugly. In fact, many of them are very beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I love that photo. I, yeah. I brought up a co very colorful one that's not a jumping spider. There are many colorful jumping spiders. This that is a jumping the... spider. Oh, sorry. I meant to say, <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. I, I had another picture of a lynx spider that's green, too. Mm -hmm. That was on my mind. But, that um, looks yeah, like a magnolia jumper, I believe. Yeah. Oh, cool. This is from Borneo. And one thing that's cool, actually, about jumping spiders specifically is how they have scales. So in a way, I sort of think of them as like the butterflies and moths or the butterflies of like the spider world with all mm -hmm. their color and de decor. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and then I think I oh yeah, that's you the one I have. One? I don't have my own peacock photo. Okay. Yeah. Um I don't either at the see. moment, but I um I'm hoping to actually do some research with peacock spiders next year, in which case I'm hoping to get some really crazy photos of them. Nice. Here, I I can share this. I think I can share this one here. I, okay. I asked for permission to use it in the past, and I think you can it's publicly available to be to view too. This is by Michael Doe. Um, and did I upload? Here it is. Yeah, it's a Maratus. Yeah. yeah. That looks so, like it's doing ballet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it basically is, right? They're yeah. he's doing his whole, like, this thing, doing his that, you know, look at me, and flaps his, he's got that little abdomen flap, so that's usually um, down kind of on his backside. But when he sees uh -huh. a female, he raises his legs, sticks his abdomen flap up, and shakes it back and forth. Um, so that kind of like shake your tail feather thing is going on and he's just being beautiful. He's dancing. He's doing, he's got these beautiful eyes in the front. He's got all this coloration and he's, he's dancing for the female, but also dancing for his life because she might eat him. Um, he's mm -hmm. also attracting a lot of attention to himself so he could get eaten by a predator, but he's, he's doing what he's got to do. And I think that's awesome. Like what, what about that is ugly? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a good gateway spider too. Mm -hmm. Once you get to know them, there's a lot of really beautiful ones. I might have a video we can see as well. Let me see if I can bring up uh, Michael Doe's video. Oh, I think it's working. Okay. I will. I think it's working. Let me see. Maybe we'll try. All right. One moment. Okay. All right. Maybe it's not working. It should be in that box. I don't it see, might see a black box. screen. But... All right. Hope everyone's enjoying the video with your imagination. <laughs> it says okay. pre-recorded. Yeah, that's it's... part of Haps adding that on there. But I'll okay. show one other picture of a another um, jumper. Yeah. Oh, oh that, beautiful. That yeah. yeah There's this beautiful hairs on the pedipalps in the front there. They're really mm -hmm. like cotton candy or colored or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I don't know if you have the uh, the photo um, 
or people saw the photo from like the advertisement of this particular uh, stream, but there was a picture of me holding this uh, Regis on my oh, finger. Yeah. Here it is. Um, oh, you have it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, you can kind of see her. She's about this big and she's got like this kind of pinkish face, uh, this like chelicera area. And she's got these beautiful legs and this gorgeous like white stripe um, where her eyes are. And she's just a beautiful spider. And she was just kind of walking around and I would look at her and I would do like this and she'd go, we'd, we'd kept doing like this. And <laughs> she's really looking at me. And, you know, sometimes, I mean, I've had spiders that I've tried to interact with. I've actually raised my hand in a spider and I've had a spider go like this. And I don't think that was necessarily an excited thing for them. That might have been like a, what are you doing? But I got to project my own thoughts on it and think, oh, it's saying hi. Yay. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're beautiful. They're diverse. They're, um, they have all these crazy behaviors that they do, whether it be making different types of webs or not making webs at all, how they catch prey, how they, oh, yeah, that's one of my males that was up there. Yeah. Let me bring it back up. I meant to keep it up. And then I clicked the wrong picture. Here we go. Yeah, that's one of the males of my, my regal jumping spiders. Um, he is also got this like beautiful uh, kind of green face. Sometimes depending on how you look at it, it sometimes looks blue. But you can see the patterns on him and his eyes and everything he's doing. Um, and if you look up canopy jumping spiders, I showed you a female, but the males are actually black and orange. So they have these beautiful patterns on them as well. Um, very, very pretty. They also have these crazy behavioral behaviors that they do. Um, and just generally they're not, you know, spiders, spiders aren't ugly. It's just like what we've decided is ugly. So like maybe we should redefine it. Yeah. Also, yeah. Pop culture reinforces it so much too, because mm -hmm. It's just an easy, like, okay, what element do we put in here to make it a scary scene? A spider. A spider. big <laughs> spider or something. Yeah. So sometimes I wonder, sometimes it's funny to think about what makes a scary, or what culture uses to um, present certain ideas, like butterflies are beautiful and gentle and fragile. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, people see dragonflies that way too, even though they're like really vicious aerial predators that... <laughs> tear things to shreds so yeah. um yeah uh and so like I, I think about how like if they didn't use spiders what would people use and maybe like a made-up animal or something like that but it's definitely easy pickings when it comes to choosing something to convey a certain thought or feeling mm -hmm. yeah Absolutely. And it's like, it's especially prevalent with like tarantulas and things because people say, oh, it's a giant spider. It could kill you. Oh my gosh. Uh, and then um, also I, I, think, I realized that a lot of people think that all spiders are black or brown, um, uh, yeah. which was, you know, shocking to me because I just, did, I didn't, I didn't realize that that was what a lot of people thought. Um, but tarantulas um, are various colors. I have four and um, they are one is one is brown, one is red, orange, and black. One is red, and one was really, really bright blue. But I looked at her recently, and she's pinkish now. So mm -hmm. um, she changed <laughs> colors at some point. Surprise! Um, right, and just hey, I changed clothes. I like pink now. It's my favorite color. But it was yeah. really cool. Um, and so they're actually kind of like I wouldn't call them collectibles, but like people who are really into tarantulas they have all of their different favorites and many of them are the crazy colored ones there's one um it's called a p metallica and it's got this a pokey metallica and it's uh, mm. a bright blue and yellow it's just this crazy colors and they're absolutely beautiful they're very fast but they're they're gorgeous if you look them up later like it's just a beautiful spider yeah there's a it's really awesome to see all the colors that they come in i uploaded a couple other colorful spider photos as well. Here's one. I'll bring it in. Uh, this is the lynx photo yeah, I think I was lynx. thinking of. Yeah, but that's definitely lynx. Uh, kind of pale, but cool, like gradient of colors. Mm -hmm. um, also from Borneo. And then here's a white spider. So very pale and, oh, and greenish too. Here, I'll switch. Oh, yeah, it's like a crab spider. Yeah. 
healing some prey. I noticed the prey first and was like, why, why is that wasp oriented in that really strange yeah. position? That's how, oftentimes how I find them when they're with prey. I see, I see the prey first and, and I wonder why it looks so strange and not how it yeah. ought to be. And That's then, actually how it online, yeah. Yeah. I've seen um, a dragonfly once that was like hanging in a weird position. And I was like, what are you doing? Oh, you're being held. There's <laughs> fire under there that's holding you at an awkward angle. Oh, oh yeah. Surprise. Um, so Craig is asking what spider has the longest lifespan and how long? So maybe we can transition to like a little bit of an AMA if you're okay mm -hmm. with that, Trinity. Okay. Um, that's a great question. Yeah. So oh. I would say that... Uh, from what I know, um, tarantulas and some trapdoor spiders have the longest lifespans that I know of. Um, I think there was a trapdoor spider that died recently that was like 37 or something. Um, but a lot yeah, of tarantulas. The, what? The one, you, the one you're thinking of was 43 years old. 43? It was and 43. It was, okay. Yeah, it was like in the news and um, yeah. it didn't even die of a natural death because they saw evidence of a, of a wasp that had broken down the uh, door. And, dang it would be a yeah. wasp yeah but um but yeah no a lot of tarantulas um that's another reason that people really like them is because tarantulas especially the females many of them live for decades um up to 30 years or so and so you can get this pet and you're, it's not just like oh this is a one-year commitment this thing will uh take seven or eight years to become an adult and then live as an adult for like 20 years and it's cool because you have you know, they shed, they, they molt. So they, they shed their skin kind of like snakes, but a little different. And so you actually have like basically a replica of the spider and you can show people, this is how big it was exactly when I got it. This is how big it is now. This is what color it was. This is what it looks like. And these are all, you know, this is April 17th, how, whatever year, this is its size, you know, July 22nd, this year, this was its size. And you can actually show people exactly how much bigger it got every time it, it changed its skin, which was really cool. I was looking for a picture of a tarantula to show while you were talking about tarantulas. And the one the one tarantula that I found is the one with that I have of my tarantula on my head. So I will share it. Um, yeah, I wish I'd... Oh, it nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's Saffron, and I, I'm hoping that we live into old age together. She's nice. about 13 years old now, and I don't I don't really recommend putting a tarantula on your head um, unless you're super slow and careful because – not because it's, like, dangerous for you, but because it's dangerous – it can be dangerous for the terrestrial spider. So this was a little bit of a scary moment, but, um, yeah, just as a heads up. 100% mm -hmm. but... agree. A terrestrial children and tarantulas if they fall from very far at all they just kind of die yeah so. i've gotten some flack from spider people for um some of the photos like that that i have with her um so yeah. um i wish i meant to do this i didn't uh manage to do it before i left i've been in the field for a couple weeks now um but i meant to and if you want to share the photos at some point later you're welcome to but i'll send you some photos of my tarantulas who molted recently um I have some, that was one of the things I was going to do when I was going to be in my house, but yeah, in the field, um, as I have some really, really pretty tra uh, pictures of my tarantulas, the actual tarantulas and the tarantulas kind of splayed out, um, in terms of their, their skin. So you can see all eight holes and you know, where they pull their legs out and the top and you know, the carapace and everything. Um, and I have different sizes and different colors and all that. Awesome. So I'm happy Good. to share that with you later. Will you join as a guest on Sips and Spiders with Absolutely. Sebastian sometime? Okay. Absolutely. And I'll bring the I'll bring the photos. I love Sebastian. Super cool. Cool. Yeah. Um sounds good. Yeah. But how long are you in the field for? Until when? Um, I should be in the field until I believe so the current plan is to be in the field until August fifth. But it's Gainesville. The I need to do it mostly when it, the field work when it's not raining. Um, and it keeps raining at, inter you know, just random times. And so today it was supposed to rain all day and then it didn't rain this morning. And then I was like, okay, great. And then right as I started to go out, it started raining. Um, and then it stopped at like four <laughs> and it was supposed to go all day. And so it's, it's very, very difficult to actually know. So basically what happens is I just, if it's not raining, I rush out and just try to get out there for as long as possible. 
Um, so if I get everything I need by August 5th, then I will come back and head, I'll head back to Berkeley. Um, but if not, I might, I might make it a little bit longer. We'll see. Cool. What are your goals for like your field time? What, what makes it a successful field season for you? That's an excellent question. Um, I would say that oh, I, mean, I have, and sorry to interrupt Trinity, but will ahead. you also take like, like a couple of sentences to remind people what you're doing in the field for anyone who wasn't with us at the beginning of the broadcast. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so I would say that a successful field season for me, so I need a certain amount of spiders um, to do my research. And like, again, they all get lots of food and get to hang out in the lab and do their thing. Um, but I, I do need a certain amount of them. And so for me, success is getting that amount or near that amount and um, you know, doing it in a relatively, uh, not necessarily a, a quick time frame, but like not trying to like drag it out forever. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm really enjoying being out in the field. I like watching the spiders do what they're doing. I don't catch them all. Um, there are some that I just kind of poke out of their little hides and take pictures of them, some really nice photos. Um, I just let them go back because I'm just like, you're really pretty and I wanted to see you. Sorry for disturbing you. Goodbye. Um, I appreciate I, you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, I just, I, you know, I don't, I don't need this one. And plus I want to make sure there's plenty still in the field. So like I often like leave the adults and like make sure, especially if they like got egg sacs and things like do your thing. It's fine. <laughs> um, but I also at the same time, um, I like seeing what they're doing. So I, I, I feel really excited when I see them like, you know, once eating a grasshopper or once eating, <laughs> once eating a, um, a cricket, or, I mean, I, I feel sad when I see one eating another one, I'm kind of like, well, dang, but, um, but I, I like seeing them in their natural habitats. I like writing down what they're doing, where I found them. Um, I've gotten actually a little bit better. Last time I came to the field a couple of years ago, I mostly only knew how to find them if they were in a particular area, like on this fence post. And now I'm realizing I can actually see them in the grass now. I can see them in the grass. I can see tall pieces of grass as we're walking around. I can look and realize like, oh, wait, that piece of grass actually has, um, sorry, I've got a lot of spiders in, 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 on the table around me and some of them are doing like this at me. Um, but I actually like the fact that I can see uh, like tall pieces of grass. And if I actually look a little bit closer, take a second to think about like what's going on around me. I look down and realize, there are like three tiny little silk nests in different parts of this grass. And if I, sometimes I open them up slightly and I just see these little eyes and they'll kind of like retreat down a little bit. And that's so cool. Like I, just, I so never cute. noticed that. Like I didn't notice that at all and it's adorable. And so sometimes I'll see mine in there. Sometimes I will poke one out a little bit and it's a different, it's a different jumper or it's a different spider entirely. And it's just kind of looking at me like wondering well, why are you here? And I'm like, I'm sorry to disturb you. I just want to see what you wear. And then it'll run back <laughs> inside. Well, you know, be on my way. But I love seeing what they're doing, where they are, um, their behaviors, their patterns, all of it. So cool. And I love, I just feel like I'm expanding my own horizons all the time and they're doing it for me. And I appreciate it. I appreciate their little, you know, will, like I don't say willingness to come out, but the fact that they will come out and they don't always run away. Sometimes they just sit there for a second and they go back inside. And I'm just like, thank you. Thank you for showing me your life for a minute. I'll, I'll leave you to it. So all of that, if Aww. I'm learning more about what they're doing and, you know, what's affecting them and learning more about what I can do to help, I think I'm doing, it's a success. I, it's good. I'm having a good time. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, thanks can for you? sharing that and your passion for the spiders and everything like that. Thank yeah. you. Can you see this? I was wondering if you can actually see this, like, hold on, I'm going to raise it up a little bit. Can you see her? Uh, I don't know. A little bit? Yeah, there's a little bit of a reflection, but we can see her okay. Okay. A little, a little like, bit farther back. Yeah, oh, I'm turning towards the camera. And uh, change the angle of it if you can. Maybe bend it upward or down. Like that? Um, I'm yeah, probably not making this better. I tried to like the computer I've... screen uh, reflection <laughs> off of it, but that's yeah. good actually right there. Yeah, you're moving around. I wanted to ask, did the arboreal jumpers like have longer a longer first pair of legs? 
Or is that just like a male thing or like a certain species thing? Because I noticed that with the one that you showed. And also I have one that's on the wall of my kitchen right now that I saw that had really long um, front first pair of legs. Right. That's a great question. So um, a lot of males often have longer front legs, um, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that they are used for, you know, different behaviors. So they're actually trying to show the females their long legs. It can often be a sign of fitness or some type of um, something that they're assessing if they're using their front legs to, um, and not, not not necessarily with the peacock spiders because some of the peacock spiders use like their third pair of legs, but a lot of a lot of jumping spiders use their front pair of legs um, and wave them around. And uh, there have been studies done that show that females are actually very much paying attention to like the size of the legs, and so they may or yeah. more may or not be um, they may be more likely to mate with the male if they have longer legs. So. Um, it, it depends, but it also is dependent on species because there are definitely some jumping spiders that just have longer front legs. Um, and there are some that are called, <laughs> there's some that are called scorpion mimics. Um, that's just because they look a little bit, a little bit like scorpions to us. Um, but a lot of them have like longer mm -hmm. front legs and things like that. So it just depends on their habitat and like what they're trying to do and, you know, what's most that's beneficial cool. to them. I haven't heard of a scorpion mimic. Uh, yeah, what, I'm curious to look it up. Yeah, but. you should look it up. They're so weird looking. <laughs> looking up what spiders are mimicking is hilarious because they just like, they mimic everything from like leaves to bird poop, ladybugs, beetles. Look up a beetle jumping spider mimic. They're, they're hilarious. They look like these little teeny, they literally look like little beetles. But if you look at it, you're like, that's actually a spider and it looks so odd, but it's really cute. Just looked it up. Yeah, everyone, go look it up. Um, maybe, <laughs> Please look it up. <laughs> um, maybe this. Let's do this. Like uh, things. Wait, spiders mimicking things as a sips and spiders. Will you join us for that? Perhaps. I don't know. There's a lot of things I want to talk to with you now about, and that's <laughs> that's one fun topic. Maybe you can join Sebastian and I with co-hosting the um, monthly spider event a couple of times, or maybe we can do a couple. We'll see. We'll, we'll chat and figure something out because okay. that's a really fun. I didn't know about the beetle thing. And it's also, we also did, also did the flip side of it where there's a lot of things mimicking spiders. Like I have some photos of flies that mimic spiders, for example. I'll, I'll bring one up to share right now. And then uh, maybe we can take one question or final remarks to wrap it up. Um, uh, one sec. Um Let's see. Hopefully I have it really close. I don't know. Oh, I don't know if I have it close. Well, in consolation, I'll share this. Oh, I, I can share it from behind me. The photo that I have of, um, I don't have the fly mimic off with me off the top of my head, but, um, my screen, but I have this mimic, this ant mimic, um, it's a saltisid or jumping spider ant mimic from Borneo eating a springtail. So love it. So yeah. cute. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that'd be a fun topic. Cool. Yeah, I'd be down. All right. Thanks so much for joining us today, Trinity, and busting those seven myths about spiders. I know I learned so much and our audience did too. Um uh and also for sharing your passion for spiders too, as well. It was just, I can tell that you really care so much and you've been studying them so much and for so long and that's super awesome. And um, I look forward to having you back on the bug scope and how can people find you? <laughs> well, um, first I just wanna say thank you because this is super fun and I feel really honored to be here. So I, I really appreciate you having me here and I've loved talking to you and I'd love to come back. So thank you so much. Um, and you can find me at, uh, Trinity walls nine. That's my, uh, Twitter handle. Um, and I will be actually posting a lot of, uh, photos from the field starting today and from now on. Um, so I've got a bunch of like cute spider photos that I'm, that I'm going to be posting. Um, I'm trying to, some of the ones that I, especially the ones that I'm not catching, I'm just like photographing them because they're cute. Um, oh yeah. Uh-huh. That's, okay, that's, that's a fun uh, photo. The most recent one. Very but... stylish in the field with your hat and jacket and everything. <laughs> <Real top hat. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I was surprised how many people were like the hat, and I was like, yeah, I think it's a combination of the hat and like the look over the shoulder and your expression. Yeah. It just gives a sort of like like a, a very strong presence or like a, sen a <laughs> sense of story or something to the viewer. <laughs> So. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad people enjoy it. I, I appreciate people, the support. Yeah. So thank you. So, yeah. Thanks so much for joining and um, uh, good luck in the field. Thank and, you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And yeah, everyone go follow Trinity. I put her um, link in the chat. And before we I press the end button, oh, I will also put the her handle on this or Twitter handle on the screen so you guys can find her there with any follow-up questions. So yeah, thanks so much. Have a great evening, everybody. Thanks, Trinity, again. And go spiders. <laughs> thanks, guys. Go spiders. Woo. Okay. Where